This is a Star Wars blaster toy from either 1977 or 1978. I found it in the basement at my in-law's house. This belonged to my husband when he was a kid. And it came out when Star Wars came out, the first movie, before it was called Episode 4 or A New Hope or anything. There was only one movie, Star Wars. And um, yeah, I think this is 1977 or 1978. Um, so yeah, I don't have any C batteries, um, but I hooked it up to a power supply and it wasn't working. Um, and I found a video that showed how to repair it. So I opened it up. I have actually taken the screws out, um, from the other side. I'll show you that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just find where all the screws are and take them out. It's a little tricky to open. This is the battery compartment here, um, which I have opened up. This I'll assemble this all later, and at the end of the video, you'll see it working. Um, the Star Wars sticker is a little bit scuffed, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'll show you the battery cover later. That would be on here. After you take the screws out, they're all on the side where the battery cover is. Then you will want to flip it over because the components, when I opened this the first time, they all just fell out um, because you really want to lift the top off from this orientation. It's, things still may pop out of place, we'll see. Um, when you're taking apart the two pieces, I don't think I can do this with one hand. I'll have to stop the video. But I found that the trickiest <clears throat> spots were up here and up here in the scope. This part, the main body of the gun, and the grip kind of comes apart easily, but you might have to work it a little bit up here. But I didn't have too much trouble with that. It's opened up now. I just lifted this. Uh, part off after working it a little to get it loose and then I'll just put that aside it's nothing we need from this half right now and so here you can see so if you had lifted it apart the other way it's possible all these pieces could just have fallen out and yeah this is actually a um, mechanical sound it's not an electronic chip to make the pew pew noise which you'll see later it does not really sound like pew pew it sounds like a food processor but um, this is the motor here and this is a strip of plastic and that's what actually makes the noise is the, this motor is just spinning this is like a plastic gear thing and then this strip of plastic oops, there goes the trigger it um, just rubs against it and that's the noise the pew pew noise, just two pieces of plastic rubbing together while this spins around. Um, so um, pretty straightforward. When you pull the trigger, this metal is going to make contact with this wire. I mean, I don't know anything about electronics or engineering, but this is very simple anyway. Um, this is a button here. You have to press this button. And then this metal contacts this metal. This obviously goes to the battery. You put two C batteries in here. Um, yeah, here's the compartment. I'll show that later. I don't actually have any C batteries at the moment, um, but I already filmed segment two of this video. I hooked it up to a power supply in the basement and you will see it making sounds. And before I show section two of the video, just want to say a special thanks to the Retro Blasting channel. I think on YouTube there was a video about like restoration of a Kenner uh, laser pistol and it showed um, the inside and a diagram, which was very helpful because like I said, when I opened this up, all the parts just fell out and I had no idea where they had come from and probably if you you know, have half a brain, you could figure out how it goes together. But for 
engineering stuff I really don't so I really needed the help from that video so thank you to those people on the side of the gun or the laser pistol or blaster I'm not sure what this actually is um, you can see there's fake screws in a couple of places so um, yeah there are actually no real screws on this side there are eight screws in total and you can see that two of them are a little bit shorter and I think this one is is skinnier or something and I'm still a little bit confused by what this one is I didn't pay attention when I took them out <clears throat> but fortunately the retro blaster channel video uh, the guy said that this one and this one are the shorter screws I am not sure about this weird little one though so I've put it together several times and I think maybe I put it over here or over here I don't remember it seemed to work fine though <laughs> correction I put the weird skinny screw here and then the short ones here and here and that seemed to work the rest are all the same so those don't matter too much. I mean, I'm assuming these are all the original screws. I, I thought maybe this weird skinny one could have been a replacement, but um, my husband said that he did not really play with this very much. That's probably why it's in really good condition and it even has the battery cover and the knobs, which I guess um, that's pretty rare to have all that stuff because um, he thought this was a pretty lame toy <laughs> um, and he I think he thought Star Wars was okay he has some Star Wars stuff but I think he preferred like Battlestar Galactica he liked the Cylons and I don't know what else Space 1999 and the movie The Black Hole he liked the robots so anyway I don't think he played with this very much since I have taken this apart a few times now, I've noticed that the reason it's a little difficult to separate the two halves in these spots is because there are these holes here at the end of the barrel, and there's these plastic pins or protrusions that go in there. So that you have to sort of work apart. And then here in the scope or the sight or whatever this is called there's more holes there and you can see again these plastic pins or protrusions or whatever they're called so it's good to know where those are ahead of time so you'll know where you have to kind of use your fingernails or jam something in there to pry the two pieces apart if you notice that the button is really floppy um, and has no resistance, then you will probably want to take out this copper metal and then just bend it so that it's applying force um, towards the button. That's. I'm down in the basement now. I actually didn't have any C batteries. So we are printing some, I don't know what, something to convert double A's to C batteries. But while that's printing, I mean, of course, I could go to the store and buy C batteries, but I'm not doing that right now. So this is now connected to this thingamajiggy power supply thingy that makes electricity. And I think I didn't really have to open this gun. <laughs> I think it would have worked fine before I didn't realize there was this button until I took it apart that you have to also press while you pull the trigger. So right now I set this to 2 volts, which I guess is lower than the battery. And so the sound will be a little lower. And it also depends how much you pull the trigger. To me, it sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a food processor. <laughs> Because when I was a kid, the ray guns in like 1982, 1983 were, I guess, electronic and made much better sounds. This is like a mechanical thing. It's a piece of plastic 
rubbing another piece of plastic. This is now set to 2.7 volts, which should be closer to the actual sound when the batteries are in. But you know what? I guess on any voltage, if you pr pull this more or less, you can create the same sounds. And now there is some question of whether the electronic technology existed in 1977 or 78. I was kind of saying it didn't, but then my husband said that maybe it did and maybe they purposely or cheaply or whatever <laughs> made this particular gun with the motor and plastic instead of electronic noises. That's something I could look up, I suppose. I thought I'd just show some of the other stuff from the basement. There were these um, trading cards. Some of them are stickers and some just regular trading cards. There was this, I think is from Star Wars, the land speeder or whatever Luke's land speeder. This is kind of dirty, probably should clean it. And um, this guy was in it, and I just kind of thought he was from Star Wars because he's orange. But um, then when I got home, this I don't know who this is. This doesn't really look like a Star Wars guy. It certainly is not Luke, so he might be from a different show. I will have to look next time I'm in the basement if there is in a real Luke or some other star wars person he does fit in here i'm just looking through my camera there he's passed out whatever and that's about it for the star wars stuff um i've got this is my baby yoda this is my favorite thing about star wars and yeah you're not from the original star wars though well surprise surprise they did fit in there. My husband came up and he just used his ape force to squish them in there and they went. Not easy to do, who knows if they will ever come out. But um, now we can give this a try. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that might have sounded cool in 1978, but it just sounds so funny to me. The battery cover is on now. And when I first looked at this, I could not figure out where the batteries were. So that is well done, I think, that they incorporated it into the design of the blaster. Uh, and you really can't tell. I thought the batteries might go in here or who knows where. But what you do is you turn the knobs so that this little line is facing the arrow here and you do the same thing here you spin this I mean I'm sure I can't do this with one hand but you just get them aligned and then you can take off the cover I might have to wiggle a little bit oh yeah actually it did come right off sounds like that I thought this was funny the sticker <laughs> to show the batteries here because it takes two C batteries I'm sorry, these do not look like C batteries. <laughs> Those look like double A's. And it's kind of cool, actually, since we did this 3D print of the battery converters. So now the gun is, is very light. It'd be a lot heavier with the real C batteries in it. It actually sounds like a drill or something, I guess. And like I said, Depending how much you pull the trigger, you get a different sound, kind of a deeper or a higher pitch sound. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, and I was a little disappointed. Uh, at first I thought these knobs were going to be, you can change the sound. Because like I said, when I was a kid in the 80s, I did have a ray gun that was electronic and it had a knob just like this but you could change the sound to different like space ray gun noises 
and I thought this was gonna have all kinds of different settings for like lights and different sounds, but nope, the only thing it does is this. <laughs> it really sounds like a drill to me now. And in case anyone is interested in a, well, my camera doesn't do a very good close up here. 20th Century Fox Film Corporation, 1977. And then here it says something about General Mills Fun Group, 1978. Okay, so it is 1978. Kenner Products, Cincinnati, Ohio. Made in Macau. All right, then. <laughs> One more thing. This is a really rambling video, I guess. Uh, I was just remembering some of my toy guns from the 80s. There was the ray gun that was white plastic. But this reminded me, um, I guess, the difference between 1978 and then the early 80s, or maybe it was even the mid 80s by then. But I think this just a black gun, even though it doesn't look like a real gun. Even by the 80s, when I had these things, they, you would have to put a neon orange tip on it so that people would know it's not a real gun. Because I remembered that I had an Uzi, actually. I don't know what year that was, 1984, 1985, I don't know. Whenever Uzis were a thing in the 80s, I had a black toy Uzi, and it really looked like one, except they did put like the fluorescent orange tip on it. So, yeah, but back then, I guess, I mean, maybe now they don't even have put the fluorescent on it for something like this because it doesn't look like a real gun. I'm not sure. All right, if you're going to be a Mandalorian or a Jedi, you can have a blaster. Why not? You look really good with it. Let's test the gun out in the field. Uh-oh, someone stole Luke's land speeder. <laughs> Not really sure if you should do it sustained or in bursts. Uh-oh, a robot axolotl. It's gone berserk. Oh, what fun. Don't shoot your eye out, kid. I'm not going to open this back up again, but um, my husband mentioned that at the time, I mean, they clearly had plastic toys already, but he said the inside, if you remember the top of the motor, that white plastic, and then the plastic strip he, that makes the noise. He thinks that's nylon, and he thinks that at the time, in 1978, that was quite a new thing, that nylon plastic, and uh, that it doesn't wear out. So those things could rub together for a very long time without um, melting or <laughs> disintegrating or whatever would happen to normal plastic over time. And so that was pretty high tech back then, that nylon.